please turn your Bible with me over to the book of 1 John chapter 5. We seem like we've slowed down in chapter 5, and we have. Because we're looking at those very important passages that John is telling us what we know. Because what's going on in Asia Minor? And we talked a lot about what's going on in Asia Minor and, and why this book was written and, and why John had to deal with some issues that some people were teaching that were wrong. And he would call them lies about Jesus not coming in the flesh. That Jesus not being God. And to John, that is, and we talked about this the week before, that sin that leads to death. The one that just gets you so separated from God that there's just no way back. Now, those people were called the Gnostics, the Knowers. And in that kind of ironic literary tool, John's now telling us about what we know. And what we've seen so far in chapter 5 is we know that we have eternal life. And we knew that, John knew that, because he saw Jesus after he died. He said, we know that God hears us. And John knew that because actually Jesus listened to him. And then, last week, we talked about, um, about praying for each other because God hears us and we should be praying for each other. And we've made a commitment to pray. We've made a commitment to pray for the new church plant. We made a commitment to pray for each of you by name in the elders meeting. We need to be praying for each other, especially when it comes down to sin, which he's talking about in verse 17. But verse 18 is our text today. Chapter 5, verse 18. We know, there it is, we know that anyone born of God does not continue to sin. The one who is born of God keeps him safe and the evil one does not touch him. We know, there it is again, that we are children of God, and that the whole world is under control of the evil one. Now, last week, we talked about losing you when we talked about the sin that leads to death, and how scary that is. <coughs> There's something pretty scary in this passage, too, right? We know that we are born of God and the whole world is under control of the evil. Satan. The devil. Beelzebub. Any other names come to mind? Okay. Pretty scary, right? It's one of those things I'm going, oh, that doesn't sound very good. Okay. <laughs> Let's take this one step at a time. We know those who are born of God do not continue to sin. Because the one who was born of God, talking about Jesus, keeps them safe. Now remember what sin he was just talking about, okay? I'm talking about the sin that leads to death. That's what he's talking about. If you yank these verses out of context, I could talk to you about any sin, couldn't I? Right? Let's talk about speeding. That's pretty inert. That doesn't hurt too bad, right? How many of us go over the speed limit? We know that those born of God do not go over the speed limit, therefore you're not born of God. This is what you have to be careful with in the text not to do. John was talking about a specific sin. That sin was being claiming that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. Okay, the sin leads to death. Now he says, we know that those who are born of God don't do that. We know that. They don't continue to do that. Did you catch continue in there? They might have said something stupid about that at one time, or they might even believe in that or some part of it, but, but not anymore. They, they have let go of this fact, this idea that Jesus did not come in the flesh. The one who was born of God protects. Now he says, we also know that the whole world is subject to the evil. Now, this is not the first time John has talked about Satan in the book of First John. Right? You have to read it again. It's in there. 
he's talked about Satan before. Now, his idea of Satan, your idea of Satan may not be the same. Is that an eye-opener? <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be. I mean, we have some ideas of Satan that probably are not in keeping at all with what John thinks about when he thinks about Satan. Or what Jesus thinks about when he thinks about Satan. Now, in the book of 1 John, we have done this before. We have gone back to the Gospel of John. Do you remember that? And we're going to do it again because a lot of you just looked at me like, no, I don't remember. Keep your fingers there. We're going to come back. Go to John chapter 8. The Gospel of John chapter 8. What we're looking at is what is the biblical view of Satan? What does John think about when he thinks about Satan? What did Jesus teach when he taught about Satan? He says, um, let's see here. Let's start down in uh, chapter 8, verse 42. Now, this is a situation where Jesus is having this real fun debate with the religious, Jewish religious leaders about who their father is. And in verse 42, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now I am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. And you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth. For there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. When Jesus teaches about Satan, when John thinks about Satan, when John uses the word Satan, this is what you need to know. He's a liar. He doesn't speak the truth. Now the truth that John wants to keep in front of him, the truth that John wrote this whole book about is that God loved the world so much that he became flesh and lived for a while among us. And that he died. You know, we're going to talk about that. We're going to remember that later on. Physically, for us. Because he loves us so much. What they wanted to do in Asia Minor was to take away that truth. They wanted to believe a lie. Yeah, God loves, but he only loves certain people. And God only makes certain people special. And we happen to be one of them. And if you come to us, we can teach you what it means to be special and why God thinks we're so special. And maybe someday you can, might possibly be special like us. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. He says when it comes to theology, and this is what we're talking about, the study of God, the idea of God, the very premise, the very groundwork, the very foundation. If you take away John 3.16 that God so loved me, so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. If you take that away then all you're living with is lies. Now we wouldn't do that, would we? We wouldn't accept any lies like that, would we? No. Well, you know what? Sometimes we forget that that's the premise of our theology. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we like to create God in our own image. Sometimes we like to have views of God that don't really match that premise. That God only loves certain people so much that he gave himself. That's not what the text says, is it? That God loves everyone. That God so loved the world. That only certain people are worthy of this message. Only certain people are worthy of living the life that we know God wants to live. And that, strangely enough, looks like us. Do you ever buy into those lies? Do you ever look at somebody 
Maybe somebody in the news and say, God can't possibly love them. Maybe it's somebody in your neighborhood. Somebody that doesn't take good care of their property. And you say, God can't possibly love them. Maybe somebody at work, somebody who doesn't carry their load, and you say, God can't possibly love them. God so loved the world. Gave us only begotten Son. And if you don't stand on that foundation, and if you don't allow your name to be part of that passage, that God so loved Gary that he gave his only begotten Son. Then you're going to live a lie. And you're going to swallow lies. And you're God is not going to be the God that Jesus revealed. Now, that's what's going on in ancient life. <laughs> Can't possibly be what's going on here. Can't possibly. Okay. We know that those who've been born of God do not continue to sin. Okay. We all know that we continue to sin. We know the definition of sin. Sin is not being like God. That's missing the mark. He's the mark, right? And we struggle with it. And we help each other with our struggles. And we confess our sins to each other. And we pray for each other. And we try to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and not continue to miss the mark. But guess what? We miss the mark. So that's not what John is talking about here. He's talking about this sin that leads to death. And we don't continue to do that. So every week, we call each other back to this thing. Every week, we get together and we acknowledge, you know what? God is God. And we're not. And the only way we know about God is because He became flesh and lived for a while among us. The only way that we can be certain about God's love is because of Jesus. And that is what we bring each other back to. The fact that He had a body. And we remember that. Right? And we pass that little plate around. Take a little piece of bread and a little bit of juice and, and we remember that Jesus lived and died. And if we give that up, if we forget that, then we're off on our own. And we're creating a God. That strangely enough, looks like us. And thinks like us. And acts like us. And forgives the people that we want to forgive. And doesn't forgive the people we don't want to forgive. <clears throat> okay. A little precursor. Look at that very last verse in 1 John. The very last verse back in 1 John chapter 5. You guys are going to have to come back and hear the whole sermon on this. Or watch it on YouTube. It's a few. Okay. In verse 21. Dear children, keep yourself from idols. And we'll talk more about that. But here's the precursor. If you give up that premise, if you buy into any of these lies that John has been talking about, if you are not safe from the evil one, if you're not holding to the truth, and we're going to see this in, in 2 John and 3 John, when he talks about my children living by the truth and holding to the truth. And this is the truth we're talking about, guys. You can't let go of this. Jesus became flesh and died for me. He died for you. And if you let go of that, then your theology is out the door, down the street, someplace else. And you know what? Not living by the truth. And you've created a God. And that God is an idol. Now, we know. We know we have eternal life. We know that God listens to us. We know we ought to pray for each other. We know that those who are born of God do not say that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. We know that the whole world is living in a lie about God. They don't 
experience that truth. That God so loved them that he became flesh and died for them. And this is the good news. This is the good news that we hold out. This is the good news that the new song of Christian Church is holding out. This is the good news that we forget, that we don't understand, and we continue to hold it out to each other. And we have, we have eternal life. That God listens to us. That God loved us so much that He gave Himself as a sacrifice. And we come and we encourage each other to remember. And we sing songs. We sing songs about the Spirit. We sing songs about there's power in the blood. Would you over evil a victory win? You live by the truth. You speak the truth. You live the truth. And the truth is you are so loved. You are so loved that Jesus sacrificed himself for you.